right, we are finally ready to start waterproofing the shower. I'm gonna be using the Schluter shower system, quite the mouthful, Schluter shower system for this application. And I'm gonna be starting that by applying the Curdy membrane all over the drywall surrounding the shower. Let's get to it. So as you can see, we're off to a pretty good start already. Uh, I dropped some mortar there, but it is just a bit of a messy process. So you just have to go into it knowing that. Maybe put some drop cloths down if you can ahead of time. And also I almost forgot, but you want to wet down the surface that you're applying this membrane to. I'm just using a damp sponge for that. And then make sure that the mortar doesn't dry out too quickly. Then after smoothing out all of the mortar with the flat side of the trowel and getting a pretty even consistent thickness, I came back with the groove side of the trowel to create all the grooves going down the wall. Another helpful tip is to pencil a line vertically down the wall for the edge of your shower. Here for me it's on that left side, and that way you're not using a bunch of excess mortar and you keep your drywall nice and clean too. Then it came time to put up the first sheet of the membrane. It's a little bit cumbersome, especially with it being 8 feet long and just one person trying to hoist it into position. But it's actually really light, just sometimes hard to align it properly. Uh, but it'll stick to the mortar nice and easily, so I just make sure that the top is fairly aligned and then I'll smooth it out. And you might need to come back and make some adjustments, but it's fairly forgiving until you actually compress it into that mortar. Then once I had it in place, I realized that it was just slightly misaligned, so I pulled off the bottom, and as you can see, it actually comes off pretty easily as I hadn't applied too much pressure with my hand when first applying it. Then I made sure to get out all of the wrinkles, and I just had to realign the top in order to do that. But like I said, it's very fairly forgiving, so you don't need to worry too much about this. Then once you have it properly aligned, you can come back with a 6-inch drywall knife, and you're basically squeegeeing out all of that mortar from the inside and compressing all those ridges that you made with your trowel. And this will make sure that it's fully adhered to the wall without any air bubbles or anything like that. You do want to be careful not to rip the membrane. It is pretty durable stuff, but if you push hard enough and at the right angle, it will rip, so you just gotta be careful there. Then it came time to install the second sheet of membrane, and this one went a little bit easier as I had already learned some new techniques from applying that first sheet. And you have to make sure that you overlap these sheets at least two inches, so as you can see on the left there, I'm overlapping it around this corner. And when you do go around corners, it can also get a little bit tricky to make sure that there aren't any wrinkles and that it goes on smoothly, but I found the best way to do it was to align the top, then to align the bottom, and then kind of smooth out the middle as you went, and I had pretty good results when I used this technique. I then squeegeed out all the mortar using my drywall knife once again, and it's inevitable that it's going to get a little bit dirty, mortar's going to get everywhere, but that's okay, it doesn't ruin any of the waterproofing capabilities of the system. Then it was on to the third sheet, and this one luckily went over the entire window so I could just cut it out after the fact, after installing it rather than trying to cut it out on the front end. And then when I first put it up I realized I didn't have enough mortar on the right there so I just had to take it down real quick, add some extra mortar, then I could get it back into place. Then I had to cut out the window opening and I was very careful to save as much material as I could as I was planning on wrapping it around the window frame. So after cutting along those diagonals, I could then cut each triangle to size and then fold it into the window to try and get as much waterproofing capability as I could out of this membrane. I would also come back to add some extra sheets in the corners to make sure it was fully waterproof. Then I was finally on to my final and fourth sheet of the membrane, and sometimes people cut out the hole for the shower valve ahead of time. I found it best just to put it up and then cut it out after, and I cut it pretty small, and then I came back later and cut it to the proper size, but I was a little bit worried about cutting too much away, so I just went slowly there. Then I cut out the niche. This is just a 12 by 12 prefabricated niche by Schluter that I installed in last episode. I then applied a gasket around the mixing valve. This makes sure that the drywall behind the membrane doesn't get wet as it has a rubber seal that goes all the way into the wall. And then I installed the drain. Chronologically, I actually did this first, but I think it makes a little bit more sense showing it in this part of the video. But I don't have access to the plumbing underneath the subfloor here, so I had to install this before installing the entire pan. So here I'm just making sure that both of my pieces have the PVC cement, and then I compressed it to fit. And those styrofoam pieces are actually from the pan that I broke off to make sure that the drain sits at the right height off of the floor. 
Once it was installed, I had some leftover water, so I just poured that down the drain and then I checked to make sure that there weren't any leaks. I could then install the pan, which is actually pre-sloped, so it makes the process a lot easier. Here I'm using the same mortar that I did for the walls, and this is actually Schluter All Set, which you can buy by the bag. It's a little bit more expensive, but I highly recommend it as it's compatible with all of Schluter's products, otherwise you have to buy very particular mortars that are unmodified, which are pretty hard to find nowadays. Luckily, all my measurements were correct and the drain fit perfectly inside of the pan. Then I just applied some pressure downward across the entire surface, being careful not to damage any of the styrofoam, and then I scraped away my excess mortar. I then can move on to installing my curb, and the kit that I got actually came with two curbs, so I had just enough to go from one wall to the other. Again, using the same mortar to apply it to both the walls, the floors, and the pan itself, and this way it makes sure that it stays fully secure. And as you might notice there on the top right, the pan doesn't actually go all the way to the other wall, so we'll be addressing that here shortly. But first, I put in all of these corners to make sure that the pan was fully waterproof. So we'll start with a slurry coat, which is basically just some mortar. And this is so that it'll bond to this concrete. So it's basically just a thin layer of mortar across the whole surface. And now we add our bedding mix, which is basically like wet sand. So you can make it into a snowball, it holds its shape, but if you squeeze it, it breaks back down. So this product goes by a variety of names, but what I bought is called bedding mix, and this is what most shower pans used to be made out of, as you can shape it to whatever shape you need to, and then put an angle on it, and then overnight it'll dry and become rock hard the next day. So here's what I used to make sure that the pan went all the way to the other wall, and it was actually pretty easy, you just have to take your time with it and make sure that it's fully compressed, and that it's also flush with the rest of the pan. The next day it was fully cured, so then I added some curdy membrane on top of it, as by itself it's not technically waterproof. And so as you can see, this bedding mix comes in real handy as you can use it for a variety of shapes and sizes of shower and still use the Schluter pre-sloped pans even if they don't fit perfectly. I was then finally on to the last part of the waterproofing process, which is applying these curdy bands from corner to corner. All right, now that the shower is fully waterproofed, we can begin our water test. We're gonna pour in about five to 10 gallons of water while the drain is plugged to make sure that the water level stays consistent over the course of 24 hours. Let's get started. All right, so now the water has been in here for over 24 hours and I made sure that it's at the same level as when I first put it in to make sure that there's no leaks. Now that we know it's fully waterproof, we can drain it. Let's go ahead and do that. And that's gonna wrap up this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something along the way. I'm really proud of how this turned out and honestly, I was a little bit nervous about waterproofing a shower for the very first time, but the Schluter system actually went really smooth and there are some mixed reviews on it, but overall I would recommend it to you guys if you're doing a year bathroom for the first time. And you can find all the links to all the tools and products I use down in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like as it really helps the channel out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as we post new DIY videos every single Saturday, including all the steps in this bathroom renovation series. And next week we're going to be covering how to install a heated floor. I'm going to be using the Schluter shower, shower system. I'm going to be using the Schluter, Schluter, the Schluter shower system. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.